Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulillah, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. So when it's time to begin our prayer, the first thing we say is Allahu Akbar. This is how we officially enter the prayer. And this phrase is often translated as Allah is the greatest. But we want to take a closer look and understand each individual word. So first let's look at the word Allah. Allah is the name of the Lord of the worlds, the one true God. And Allah has many names such as the Creator, the Eternal, the Merciful. But scholars consider Allah to be the greatest of His names and the foundation. As He says in the Quran, the most beautiful names belong to Allah. And from the special qualities of the name Allah, is that it entails all of the meanings of all of His great names and attributes, such as the all-hearing, the all-knowing, the generous. Okay, that's a little bit about the meaning of the word Allah. Now let's take a look at the word Allah grammatically. So first we want to figure out what type of word Allah is. In episode 1 we learned that there are three types of words. The fi'l, the ism, and the harf. And since Allah has a complete meaning with no relation to time, we know that it is an ism. Lastly, we want to analyze the state that the word Allah is in, in regards to the phrase Allahu Akbar. Because in Arabic, words are known to be in a particular state in relation to the role that they play in the sentence that they appear in. So when it comes to an ism, there are three different states that it takes. Marfu', Mansub, and majrur. And we can tell which state the word is in because of the haraka that appears at the end of the word. In these examples, the haraka has been highlighted in red, and we show the word Allah in each of these three states. So generally speaking, when an ism is marfu, it takes a dhamma. When it is mansub, it takes a fatha, and when it is majrur, it takes a kasra. So we can say that marfu is the default state for an ism. And since Allah begins the sentence, Allahu Akbar, it automatically goes into its default state of marfu'. And since the sign of an ism being marfu' is the damma, it ends in a damma. And since a damma makes the u sound, the final result is Allahu Akbar. If we look at the mansub state, we see in Allah. This is because the word Allah comes after the word inna. And according to the rules of Arabic, which we'll learn later inshallah, the word inna makes the word after it, Allah in this case, be in a state of mansub, which is represented by the fatha, which makes the a ah sound, so we say inna Allah. And finally, if we look at the majrur state, we see a'udhu billahi, because Allah comes after the harf b. And according to the rules of Arabic, which we'll learn later inshallah, this harf makes the word coming after it, Allah in this case, be in the state of majrur, which is represented by the kasra, which makes the e sound. So we say, a'udhu billahi. Now of course we are analyzing the phrase Allahu Akbar. So Allah, it begins the sentence, so it comes in its default state, which is marfu', which is represented by the dhamma. That's why we say Allahu Akbar and not Allah Akbar or Allahi Akbar. We say Allahu Akbar. So to summarize, we talked about the meaning of Allah, that it is the greatest name of the Lord of the world, which comprises all of His names and attributes. We learned that Allah is an ism, and that the word Allah begins the sentence Allahu Akbar, so the state that it is naturally in is marfu, which is represented by the dhamma, which makes the u sound, so that's why we say Allahu Akbar. Insha'Allah in the next episode, we will take a look at the second half of the phrase and we will analyze the word Akbar. Jazakum Allahu khairan for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.